those darn kids. It began on an overcast Thursday in the suburban maze of Oakwood Heights. Mark, fresh from the office's chaos, was navigating the familiar turns toward home. Traffic was unusually forgiving, but his mind was a tangle of spreadsheets and missed deadlines, leaving him oblivious to his surroundings. That was until the sharp screech of bike tires and an outraged chorus of youthful voices shattered his reverie. In his haste, he had cut off a trio of kids on bikes. Hey, watch it, mister, one of them yelled, his voice tinged with a venom that seemed too harsh for his age. Mark mumbled an absent apology and drove off, the incident quickly dissolving in his rearview mirror. But the image of their scowling faces lingered longer in his mind than he cared to admit. The days that followed were peppered with sightings of the three kids. They were just blurs at first, darting out of sight whenever he tried to get a better look. But the fleeting glimpses turned into prolonged stares, and the kids' eyes seemed to follow him with an unsettling intensity. Those little bastards are everywhere, he muttered to himself after spotting them outside the grocery store, near his workplace even on his street. They were silent sentinels, always watching, never approaching, their reasons as obscure as their sudden appearances. The stalking escalated into something far more tangible. Mark found his mailbox uprooted, his car tires deflated, and once, a crude drawing left on his doorstep, a caricature of him with X's for eyes. His friends laughed it off, but Mark couldn't shake off the feeling of being hunted. Why are they doing this? He questioned aloud, but only silence answered back. Then the kids began to speak, their voices carrying across the night air. We see you, they would whisper, a simple phrase that crawled under Mark's skin and nested there like a parasite. The final encounter was the most harrowing, Returning home under a sky heavy with unshed rain, Mark heard the roll of wheels behind him. Heart in his throat, he turned to see the kids, their figures haloed by the dim glow of a flickering street lamp. They didn't move, didn't speak, just watched him with eyes that seemed too old for their faces. Leave me alone, Mark yelled, his voice breaking with a mix of anger and fear. But they remained silent, their intentions as unreadable as the shadows that clung to them. He ran then, his house only a sprint away. But as he reached his doorstep, the world behind him fell silent. He turned to look, expecting to see the kids, but they were gone, vanished as if they had never been there. Inside, the safety of his home felt like a hollow refuge. Sleep was a stranger, and every creak and sigh of the house tightened the knot of dread in his stomach. Days passed with no sign of the kids, no whispers, no shadows tailing him. But the damage had been done. The seed of fear those little bastards planted had taken root, sprouting paranoia with every rustle of leaves and distant laughter of children. What became of Mark? That, dear reader, is where our tale ends and the mystery begins. For in the silence left by those stalking shadows, Mark found himself looking over his shoulder, jumping at the slightest sound, trapped in his own home, a home that now felt like a prison of his own making. And the kids, those little bastards, had they ever truly been there at all? Or had they simply been the manifestation of some deeper, more primal fear? The answer remains elusive, much like the fate of Mark, swallowed by the night and the quiet terror of the unknown. <laughs>